Mr. Nate Geary of WGR, a friend of the yeah. show, friend of Cover One, friend of uh, Eric Turner. Yeah. He posted a really cool tweet today um, and came out. And actually, you know, Eric, because this was your idea to cue this up, you know, you tee it up and let the good people know what this tweet says and what it's all about. Yeah, it's just a lead in for, you know, the Dawson Knox development discussion. Um, and obviously, like a lot of the foundational players that the Bills have drafted over the last few years are getting their contracts. And Gabriel Davis and Dawson Knox are, and Tremaine Edgemans are guys who obviously are on the uh, verge of getting those contracts. And so he put up a poll today and I responded to it. I actually responded with Davis. So he says, let's mm-hmm. say Dawson Knox and Gabriel Davis have breakout seasons. Knox leads all tight ends and touchdowns, career high in yards and catches. Davis has 1,000 yards, 10 touchdowns. Who would you rather sign long term? I responded with Davis, but as you guys can see, it's pretty close, it's close. between the two of them. But uh, I'll throw it to you, Ant, and then get your mm. thoughts, Kendall. Who who would you guys pick, and why? I'm a big fan of chess pieces, and so in a in a normal situation, if I could have a chess piece tight end versus a really good wide receiver. I would lean chess piece tight end. I just think the opportunity to have someone who can function in the run game as a blocker, but then also function as a receiver who can be lined up in multiple places, do multiple things. Um, it gives you again, that chess piece on offense. It allows you to have, you know, to dictate matchups and really kind of set things for yourself on offense. It was part of the reason why that, Patriots offense with Gronk and Aaron Hernandez was so dangerous because you had two tight ends who could function in the run game, but also yep. in the pass. Yeah. And there's just a lot to it in this instance, though, what's tough. Gabriel Davis is also a bit of a chess piece because he, he can line up in yeah. multiple spots. He's got size. He can block. He can, he can win and get vertical versus single high too high. I'm if, if we're defining breakout years, if Dawson Knox elevates his game to say he's a top five tight end in the league, mm-hmm. I will take Dawson Knox because I think it's easier to find a good wide receiver That's fair. than it is a chess piece tight end. But if we're defining it just off the metrics that Nate gave, I would pick Gabriel Davis because I think he does have a lot of chess piece nature to his game and what you can do. We saw it a lot down the stretch last year, right? You know, putting him in short motion and having him crack down on edges Mm -hmm. or second level defenders or dig out safeties and then giving that exact same look and go and play action and gouging teams for 20 yards a pop. Like he offers you a lot in that area and Knox does as well. But, you know, it based on how we're defining it on Nate's parameters, I'd go Davis. But if Knox elevates his game to where he solidifies it as he's a top five tight end in this league, I would leave Knox. Oh, and you hammered my point that uh, really swung me towards Knox. The main reason is just Jason just hit it, too. It takes longer yeah. to develop tight ends. It, it's hard. Point. It's hard to find good tight ends. And we don't know if we necessarily have a bona fide like you know, for the foreseeable future, top five, top seven range tight end. I think we're trending in that direction. But yeah, obviously, pending the tweet, mm-hmm. if all pans out and they both have breakout seasons relative to what they've done, I think I'm leaning towards Dawson Knox, even though I think the better player might be Gabe Davis. And it's mm. because of the position. It, it's strictly value. because It's strictly because of the position. And with the with the influx of youth talent to the wide receiver position and how much wide receivers get to practice with seven V sevens growing among the nation and all that stuff. There's just so like, since like 2016, the wide receiver classes have been absolutely Stacked. insane. Yeah. They get deeper and deeper every single year. So I'm not saying you're going to find one every single year, but I think your probability of finding one that's at least sufficient has gone up. So I think it's just from that regard, I think it's easier to, Bank on having that tight end that's already in house. Then, you know, hoping that you, yeah. Well, what, what do you want? I have yeah. a question for you. I have a question for you. I was just, I was just gonna leave it up until you're done with your point. I, have a question I was for too you. distracted. I was oh, way too sorry. distracted. What is he doing? Is there a fly? Is there a bee? Because this is something I've thought of as well with the amount of elite camps and all the emphasis you see on the passing aspect in football going down to the youth. Like you see like elite camps and seven on seven happen for like nine year olds. Now, like it's everywhere. It's super prevalent. Do you think, and this is for both of you guys, I'll just start with Kendall because he was already, you know, talking about it. Do you think the Justin Jefferson's and the Jamar chases of the world start to become more regular where there's one every couple of years in the NFL as we move forward. Cause again, we traditionally have not seen rookie receivers make a tremendous impact. Like we have aside from those two, you get one every handful of years, but it's rare. Do you guys think that becomes more of the norm 
as we go forward with what's happening down at the youth level and in college and high school and all that? Or do you still think those guys are unicorns in terms of what they've done? I think it's both. I think they're still unicorns. Like, don't get me wrong. Yeah, you're like, it's tough to shoot for that. Yeah. But I do agree that we're going to see it more and more often. Mm Because even the guys that didn't hit, like the Jerry Judys, the CD Lambs, like they hit, but they didn't hit as hard as Justin Jefferson and and Jamar Chase did. So I think it's going, it's just going to be something we're going to have to be used to at this point. They're, Mm there's just going to be better talent at that position, but finding like that bona fide stud, maybe one every like three, four huh. years, which would still I be think, an increase. Exactly. Right. So yeah, that that's ultimately why I lean towards Dawson Knox in this question. Yeah. I, I think, uh, you know, that poll and the results of it right now, I, I think it's exactly it's where tough. it should be. It's yeah. tough. Yeah. Um, but it also comes down to me where the defensive side of the ball, it starts to trend towards. Because we're seeing mm, a lot answer. of those Great. two high looks, right? Is the are the offense going to start the counter with heavier sets mm-hmm. and stack in the box more, going to more of that power run game? Like there's that it's a it's cyclical, right, guys? Yes, like they, the game is cyclical. Concepts, strategies, uh, they all come back around, um, just like like fashion, right? Um, so I, I'd like to I'd like to say that yes, your points about Dawson Knox are on point, and I think that. Um, it's completely fair. Everything that you guys mentioned, I just like Davis because of, you know, his impact, not Mm -hmm. as a starter, Mm, you know? So now that he's getting those first team reps, which Dawson Knox has had since he's pretty much been in the league Mm. and we've seen what Davis could do. Mm -hmm. um, If he blows up, I mean, what does that say about Davis? Is he, is he on Diggs's level? If he blows Mm -hmm. up like those numbers that Gary put out, because Dave, uh, you know, Davis is already putting up some really good numbers, when, especially when we're talking touchdowns. Yeah. Um, and as a third or fourth wide receiver, yeah. who who's not playing, uh, you know, full time reps. So, if he blows up as a number two wide receiver, it's going to be hard for me with how multi dimensional he is as a receiver. Which yep. a lot you talked about the passing camps, all that stuff's nice and dandy. Mm-hmm. But can they block like Gabriel Davis? Right. Can right. they play that quasi tight end role in the mm-hmm. box? You know, off the tackle and do a lot of the things that Dawson Knox can. I would argue that Gabriel Davis's blocking for the wide receivers is more impactful than Dawson Knox's blocking has been for the tight end group. And Ooh. so, Ooh. and so, I think, I think that's fair. I think Gabriel Davis has been doing that since day one. Yeah. Dawson mm-hmm. Knox has been trending to get to where he's at. Davis yes, did right. that from day one. So. Yeah. Um, that impact is pretty big if we're talking about how defenses may shift, yeah. uh, you know, with their, those two mm-hmm. high coverages. So that I think that was an awesome poll from Nate Geary. Yeah, it goes and, to show how yeah. great that poll was because it really got us talking there about how close it truly is. And we all just talked out of both sides of our mouth on that one. <laughs> yeah.